Today I'm going to show you what I'm calling a left-hand master technique, and it certainly is an important one. It's something that when you are comfortable playing this pattern and you understand it, you can read it quickly. It will really help you learn music faster, so it'll help you sight read. It will help you memorize better because you'll see the patterns and understand them, and it really will help your improvisation. So this is one of those things that cannot be ignored. So here's your left-hand pattern. It's a pattern in tenths. So let's start by making sure that you're comfortable playing octaves. Just playing octaves, I'm just playing a few right here. Now, there are different techniques for playing octaves. I'm playing this open hand. You can also play it closed hand. I think as harpists, our default might be to the open hand, but there are times when closed hand is also appropriate. So I use this a lot as well. So you know, you can practice actually both ways. But the octave's great. But now if we take the octave and we expand it, move our thumb up two notes, we have a tenth. Now the tenth is not only especially lovely, but it's really, really common in harp music. And the more you get comfortable playing tenths, stretching your hand that far for one thing, and just knowing where that interval is, the easier a lot of harp music will become. So. These are your tenths. As you play them, you want to make sure that they're clean, that the notes are exactly together. And that your tenths are really, really nice. Now, the nice thing about this is that it implies that harmony already. You can sort of hear a chord, and in fact, your right hand could play all kinds of little melodic figures over the top. So that would be a really fine bass line all on its own. Now let's look at what happens if you take the tenth and you just alternate notes this way. That's also useful. It's a good exercise for one thing. If you can't quite reach that stretch, then don't connect from tenth to tenth. That's okay. Just connect the one and then place the next one. That's fine. But this will give you some really good physical feel to where that interval is on the harp, which is so important. If your harp doesn't go that low, an octave higher is fine. In fact, whether your harp goes that low or not, an entire scale, well that's not quite a G, an entire scale of tenths would be really helpful. Now, another thing you can do is practice rolling them this way, also useful. When you're ready to move on, the next step is to insert your second finger. Your second finger will go right, in this case, it's on the G. It's a fifth above the bottom note. So it really completes the chord. I rolled it for you there. Nice and rolled, you can play them flat as well. most common left hand pattern that, that we are called to do for chords. So it's really important to know it and get comfortable with it. And once again, it can be a very nice bass line just with a little bit of rhythm. And this is where it's so helpful for improvisation. Take any melody and you can do the chord pattern underneath Just using this, it makes a lovely flowing bass line. All right, so now we've done our tenths. We've put the second finger in the middle. Now we're going to add the third finger. Four finger chords are always harder than three finger chords. We know this. Your third finger is going to play the note your second finger did before, fifth up from the bottom. Then your second finger is going to play an octave above your fourth finger, and your thumb still on that tenth. This is a wonderfully rich chord, and I'll bet you if you look through music you have on your stand right now, you're going to find at least a couple examples of this chord. You can roll it. In fact, if you're not used to the stretch, rolling the chord is probably a good way to start. You can play it flat. It's more difficult because you really have to reach it. One thing you should try to do is have everything placed before you roll, just because. Oops, try not to buzz. 
Now when you've gotten those four fingers to work together, look what you can do. Let's take that same chord pattern. so important they're so useful they can be the core of just about anything you play if you'd like a printout of these exercises go ahead and email me the link is in the blog post at heartmastery.com you can find the link and email me and I will get you the PDF so that you can start practicing this yourself good luck it's a left-hand master technique